Thank you very much for inviting me today to share with you some of our data in which I would like to sh show you some of our experiments regarding the long-term reprogramming of innate immune responses, what we call trained immunity and the relevance for vaccination. Before I start with our work, I would like to mention that I have nothing to disclose which is um, impeding on the presentation and on the data I have to tell today. Why did we start with this work on trying to understand the long-term reprogramming of innate immune responses? And the interest started from the BCG vaccine, which started to be introduced in Sweden in the 1930s. And what people have observed at that point is that when BCG was introduced in the population, there was a very strong decrease in overall mortality of the children who had received BCG. So the mortality of the children in those years, in the first years of life, that was before the antibiotics, was around 11%. And what it has been observed that was reduced to 4% by vaccination with BCG. Interestingly enough, this reduction in mortality was not due to tuberculosis, was responsible only for a small number of deaths in these children. So Carl Neslun, the doctor who studied this phenomenon, proposed that BCG provokes a non-specific immunity. And this type of observation has been made each time that BCG was introduced in various countries. And this is a very complicated slide, but the only thing that I would like you to, to see is the fact that the relative risk for death in the BCG children in, these, in all these trials that were presented in, in the BMG article of Higgins and colleagues showed that BCG had a protective effect. These studies in children were later on also associated with three additional studies in adults or in elderly, in which people have shown that there is a very strong reduction in respiratory tract infections by BCG by 70 to 80%. We wanted also to assess whether this effect of BCG vaccination can be reproduced in the model of controlled human infection. And as an infection model, we have used yellow fever vaccine. Why is that? Because yellow fever vaccine is an attenuated virus. And in fact, we get a very mild infection when we are, when we are vaccinated, and we can follow the viremia in the circulation by doing a PCR. What we have done, we, took two, uh, we recruited two groups of healthy individuals, and half of them got placebo, half of them got BCG. And one month later, everybody got yellow fever vaccine. And at different time points after the vaccination, we measured the number of virus particles in the blood. You can observe here on day three and on day seven, the viremia was very low. Most of the people did not have virus in their blood. But on day five, most of the people had viremia in the circulation. Importantly, people who got BCG had very significantly lower number of virus particles in the blood compared with the placebo-treated individuals. And this was also associated thereafter with a normal yellow fever antibody titer. What is thus important to conclude from this study is that indeed BCG can protect against a very mild heterologous virus infection, in this case caused by yellow fever vaccine. How is it possible that BCG protects against all types of infection and not only against tuberculosis, which is the target disease of this vaccine. Well, for that, we have to look at how the host defense is organized. And for a long time, we know that this is divided into an innate and a specific immune response. The innate immune response is rapid and effective, but is non-specific and in all the immunologic books is written that it lacks immunological memory. On the other hand, the adaptive immunity, which is given by T and B cells, is a little bit slower. It is very specific, but it also builds immunological memory. And this is how we always build our vaccine, to induce an adaptive immunological memory. However, we hypothesize, based on this non-specific, very um, beneficial effect of BCG in the, in the studies that I showed you before, that BCG may induce also protection in a independent way from the TMB cells, which are very specific. So based on innate Im immune responses. For that, we performed vaccination studies in mice 
who lack a specific immune response, such as severe combined immunodeficiency mice, skid mice. And what we have observed is that while control mice die of a, of a circulating candida albicans infection, which is very severe, when we vaccinate the skid mice with BCG, we can protect the mice. And this protection thus was induced even in the absence of a specific immune response. This study led us to the conclusion that innate immune responses, especially those mediated by myeloid cells, can also induce a long-term protection in cer certain circumstances, such as after the vaccination with BCG. The, the question is, is this happening also in humans? Are indeed the monocytes of individuals vaccinated with BCG in a different functional state than before the vaccination. And for that, we perform a clinical trial in which we vaccinated healthy young individuals with BCG, and they kindly donated blood before BCG, two weeks after, and three months after the BCG. When we assess the function of the monocyte in these individuals, what we have observed that these monocytes respond with increased cytokine production, such as TNF-alpha and interleukin-1-beta, both after stimulation with a specific stimulus, such as mycobacterium tuberculosis, as well after stimulation with heterologous infections, such as Staphylococcus aureus or Candida albicans. Moreover, we have observed that this difference in function is accompanied by difference in the transcription of these genes, and that was also due to epigenetic changes at the level of the nucleus, which permits the cell to respond stronger to, to stimulation. The monocyte epigenome, as assessed by H3K27 acetylation dy dynamic regions, can also predict which individuals respond better with BCG compared with others. And that was because the chromatin in these individuals is more relaxed, is more open, and can respond easier to stimulation during, uh, during an infection. How is this happening? So for example, a naive monocyte and macrophage has, has a chromatin which is very um, uh, strongly packaged into the nucleus. It's very closed and it's very difficult for the transcription factor to bind to the DNA and induce stimulation of, of gene transcription. It's like a book which is closed and it's very obviously very difficult to read. When we stimulate, however, these monocytes and macrophages during an infection, there are chemical changes in the histones, which add his, um, uh, acetyl and methyl group on the histones, which makes the chromatin to open. So the transcription factors can bind easier to the, uh, to the promoter of the important genes for the host defense. It's like opening a book and reading the instructions how to make these proteins. When the infection is eliminated, we always thought that we lose all these chemical, uh, chemical modifications in the histones and the book is closed. And this is happening indeed. Transcription is no longer taking place. But some of these chemical modifications, especially methylation on certain parts of the histones remain present and they mark the genes which are necessary for host defense. It's like putting, it's like putting a bookmark in a book so it can be open next time when we got an infection at the right place to induce gene transcription of the necessary genes for host defense. And this is exactly what is happening in this, uh, in this process, which we called trained immunity. Well, everything is fine. And I have shown you the change in the, in the function of the monocytes two weeks, three months. And we have done even studies one year after the BCG vaccination. But something which is very strange is the fact that the monocytes are in the circulation only for one or two days, and thereafter they disappear, they go into the tissues. So how is it possible that we see this long-term change in the blood uh, monocytes of these volunteers? Well, the only possible explanation is if the same changes that I described you in the blood, the same epigenetic and transcriptional changes also take place in the bone marrow in the bone marrow progenitors of these, of these monocytes. And thus they produce continuously monocyte with a certain differentiated function. And for that, we did a follow-up 
um, uh, clinical trial in which we vaccinated both uh, uh, both with BCG but also with uh, with uh, placebo two group of individuals and we kindly asked them and they donated not only blood but also a bone marrow aspirate before and after BCG vaccination. You can see here on day zero, before the BCG vaccination, and on day 90, three months after the BCG. What we thereafter did, we have purified hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow of these individuals, and a, we performed a, a, a whole genome RNA transcription, RNA uh, sequencing, to assess the transcriptome of these hematopoietic stem cells. And what you can see here in this heat map of the cells before on day zero and on day 90 after BCG vaccination, there were huge differences actually in the, in the transcriptome of the hematopoietic stem cells. And all these changes have shown there is, that there is a very strong increase in myelopoiesis and granulopoiesis after the BCG vaccination, as you can observe here in the assessment of the pathways being increased. These studies shown us that actually the phenotype of the hematopoietic stem cells, the myeloid cell progenitors in the bone marrow change very strongly after a BCG vaccination and that leads to the production thereafter of monocytes with an increased function. This is thus the conclusion of all these studies. After a first infection, we activate the innate immune system and that goes back to normal thereafter. However, there are there are epigenetic changes taking place in the bone marrow progenitors of myeloid cells, which make that during a secondary infection, we have an increased response of the innate immune uh, uh, host defense mechanisms. And this process we called trained immunity. Now the question is, can we use this, uh, this process in real life uh, situations? And we thought of that to use it for prevention of infection. In, individuals at risk, for example, in the elderly. In the elderly, for example, they have a low innate immune response. And if they encounter an infection, let's say with a virus, let's say with COVID-19 in this situation, but it could be also influenza on any other type of virus, because of this low innate immune response, these individuals develop a high viremia in their blood. And this high viremia leads to high inflammation in the, in the circulation, hyperinflammation, a lot of symptoms, high severity of the disease, and unfortunately in some individuals can even lead to death. What we would like to do, however, using BCG vaccination, for example, is to increase these innate immune responses. So when the individuals encounter the virus, the multiplication of the virus is downregulated. There will be low viremia in the circulation, low systemic inflammation, low symptoms, and the individual would survive. In order to test this hypothesis, we recently performed a, a randomized clinical trial in elderly, higher than 65 years old, which we randomized to receive either a placebo or, um, or a BCG vaccination. This was the ACTIVATE study that we did together with colleagues in, in Greece. And thereafter, we followed these individuals, either BCG vaccinated or placebo vaccination, for one year to assess the number of infections and how quick do they get the infection uh, in these two groups. What we have observed, and this you can uh, see in this, uh, in this um, uh, graph, that the cumulative incidence of the infections in the BCG vaccinated individuals was significantly lower than in placebo vaccinated individuals. In the end, the people who got the BCG vaccine had 40% less infections than the elderly who received placebo. If we also look thereafter of what type of, what type of infections did they get less in the BCG vaccination group, we have observed that the intra-abdominal infections, urinary tract infections, and so on, they were completely the same in the two groups. However, the respiratory tract infections were very significantly lower in the group who got BCG. In fact, the elderly who received BCG had 80% less infections compared with the placebo vaccinated group. Based on this data, we would like to propose that BCG vaccination and induction of trained immunity can be used not against in general uh, 
uh, against infections, but also during emergence of a new pathogen, for example, during a pandemic. During the first month of a pandemic, we can perform clinical trials using trained immunity vaccines, such as BCG, but also measles vaccine and oral polio vaccine have been shown to show similar type of effects. If one of these is of these trials is successful, then either BCG or one of these other live attenuated vaccines can be used in the population for induction of partial protection. And in this way, we win one or two years which are necessary for the development and the use of a specific vaccine. Currently, there are several randomized trials studying precisely this hypothesis, more than 15 BCG vaccine trials, two OPV trials, and two uh, measles containing uh, vaccine trials that are used now um, in different parts of the world. With this, I would like, of course, to thank also the colleagues from our group who performed all these studies uh, from the Department of Internal Medicine in Radboud University Medical Center, also our colleagues from the Molecular Biology Department who helped us with the studies on, on the epigenetic marks, colleagues in Dresden and Bonn, with whom we worked on bone marrow progenitors, and of course, uh, our colleagues uh, from, from Athens and other groups with whom we collaborated on the clinical studies. Thank you very much.